gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, and the gluteus minimus. Sound like a badass gladiator? They're actually the three muscles that make up your glutes. Or, for those of you who aren't up to date on your Latin, your ass. Word. Come join us now for a look into functional strength with buff dudes from a time long ago. When vying for the affection of a female, crude music was the first choice for many cave dudes. But for rival alpha troglodytes who were not so musically inclined, picking up heavy objects using hip extension was a viable alternative. The results were often, at times, quite violent. Modern science has taught us that gluteus maximus is the largest gluteal muscle. It is a powerful hip extensor and it also assists in femoral external rotation and abduction as well as knee stabilization. Gluteus medius and minimus also produce the same actions. The origin of the glutes are the surface of ilium posterior and posterior gluteal line and posterior inferior surface of sacrum and coccyx. The glutes insert at the iliotibial band and gluteal tuberosity of the femur. There's the technical version. Want the simple one? Fine. Your butt helps you stand. Yeah. Rotating the femur? Adduction? What the fuck you two nerds talking about? I want to know how to build that nice, big, fat, juicy ass. Walking down the street, booty popping, necks be breaking. Bootylicious. Condensation running down the side like a soda pop can. Mm. No homo. We're going to be starting off this list with the number one in its class, master blast for that ass, the squats. An excellent compound exercise and one that if you do deep squats, ass to grass is going to build those glutes like no other. So what you want to do for squats is go ahead and walk up to the bar and as you get under it, you're going to be placing the bar at the upper trap level, not at the base of the neck because that could lead to injury. So once you have it that in position, you will be walking out from the squat rack and the feet are just gonna be about shoulder width apart or slightly wider. Toes are gonna be in a comfortable position. So if they come outward to the body, that's fine as long as the knees are tracking right in line with the toes as you squat. So to start this position, go ahead and push those hips back. It's gonna tighten those hamstrings, help support those knee joints, and then you're going to be bringing the body down to the lower position. The lower position is just about 90 degree angle from the upper to lower leg. If you wanna go below that, that is deep squats, and that's really gonna be activating those glutes. So that's what you wanna focus on in this. But make sure you're flexible enough, make sure those hamstrings aren't too tight or the lower back, or this will cause rounding in the lower back, and that's not what you wanna do. So make sure those hips are being pushed back far enough, those knees are right lined with those toes, you're going nice and deep with the squats, firing up those glutes, and as you push up to the top position, you're gonna be extending those hips and getting a nice squeeze at the top position in those glutes. Now we could go on and on about form and squats. I mean, it could be hours, but this is just the cliff notes on how to do squats, so we're just going over the basics. So remember these basics, perform squats, and that's how you're gonna build those big glutes. Coming in at number two, is the deadlifts. If squats were the queen of compound exercises, then deadlift is the almighty king. Hail to the king, baby. Not only can it work legs, back, and basically the full body, well guess what? It can work those glutes too. And we can contain about 30 minutes of information alone on the deadlifts, but that's not even the variations of the deadlifts. So right now we're just doing a standard deadlift and we're basically going over the cliff notes of what you have to remember. So what you wanna do is walk up to the bar. The bar is gonna be placed about midway on the foot. And as you bow forward, you're gonna be flexing in the hip joint and bending at the knee. So the bar is almost touching the shin. The hand placement is going to be a little bit wider than shoulder width, just so that way it's placed outside the leg. Once you're in position, the hip joint and the knee joint are not going to be matching up. So it's not at a 90 degree angle. The hip joint is gonna be slightly above the knee joint. So that's in that bowing motion. It's gonna keep the hamstrings tight. It's going to help stabilize the knee joint throughout the motion. So what you wanna do is slightly raise the hips to tighten the hamstrings a little bit more. And then you're gonna be doing a pushing motion with the legs and also a pulling motion with the back, keeping that shoulders nice and tight and the lower back contracted and straight. Once you start reaching the top position, you wanna extend the hips forward to get that nice locked out position. And once you reach that position, then that's you're gonna return it back down to the bottom position. So it's pretty much an exercise where you pick some heavy shit up and then put it down. But damn, does it build that body. Exercise three on the list is gonna be the glute bridges. 
we're gonna be building a bridge over to the land of ass. Dig in. So what you wanna do to be able to perform the glute bridges is go ahead and lay on the floor. You're gonna be bending at the knee so that way your upper and lower leg is about a 90 degree angle once you reach the top position. So you're gonna be taking the bar and rolling it just so that way it rests nice and comfortable on the hip joint. Now this is a compound movement because the knee joint and the hip joint are involved, but it is helping isolate those glutes. So what you wanna do is extend those hips to the top position, almost making like a bridge kind of motion or a bridge position at the top position. Your upper back is gonna be placed firmly into the ground while you bring those hips upward, getting a nice contraction in those glutes. So take it nice and slow, extend the hips up, getting a nice squeeze and lower it down to the bottom position in a nice slow manner. Keeping the feet nice and flat on the floor. Exercise number four on our list is gonna be a killer. In fact, it's one of our favorite exercises of all times. Sometimes in order to get to heaven, you gotta walk through hell first. And that's exactly what we're doing with the walking lunges. This is gonna bring you from a dude into a buff dude. What you wanna do is keep your feet just about shoulder width apart. You're gonna be holding the dumbbells in each hand. And you're gonna start this out by taking a nice big step forward and you're gonna be going heel toe. So once that foot is flat on the ground, you're gonna be bending in those knees, taking that one knee down to the bottom position of the floor. You can either touch the floor or keep it just slightly above the floor to keep the tension on those muscles. And so what this is, is really working on the glutes and the quads. But the farther the step out, the more stretch in the hamstrings. So you can fire those up in this exercise too. But in this, we really wanna concentrate on those glutes and quads. So take a little bit of a shallower step in this one. But make sure that knee does not go over the toe or else it's gonna cause a little bit of pressure in there and that's what you don't want. So take a nice big step and then contract those muscles to bring your body up into the top position and then go right into the next step. This exercise definitely takes a lot of energy and effort, but the more energy and effort you put into an exercise, the more you get out of it. And that's why walking lunge is one of our favorites for building those glutes, hamstrings, and quads. Last on our list is named after a foreign country. Well, at least for us anyways. And it may be foreign to some of you, but it shouldn't be because it's an awesome exercise for those glutes. It's gonna be the Bulgarian split squats. So what you wanna to do to perform the Bulgarian split squat is go ahead and take a bench. One of your foot is gonna be placed on the bench while the other one is gonna be kicked out in front of you. And this is very similar to lunges where you don't want that knee to go past your foot. So as you lower your body down to the bottom position, you're going to be getting a nice stretch in the opposite quad, the leg that the foot is placed on the bench. And the other one is gonna be really getting the push motion out of the exercise. So this is also working the quad, but is really focusing on that glute as well. So you get a nice stretch in the opposite leg, but the full contraction is gonna be the one that is placed firmly on the floor. So you wanna keep that foot flat on the floor at all times to make sure you get the proper contraction and you're not putting too much pressure in that knee joint during the duration of the exercise. So get that full range of motion throughout the exercise, get a nice squeeze to the top position. And you can also add a little weight to these too. So grab a couple pair of dumbbells in each hand and perform this exercise as well. So it's pretty much like a static lunge, but in this one, it is, is bringing your foot on a bench so you're getting a little bit more stretch in the opposite quad. There you go, five of our favorite exercises to build that maximus, medius, and minimus into something just as epic as the names themselves. So what are you waiting for? Go out there, hit the gym, and make an ass out of yourself. Make an ass out of myself, no problem. Douche bro torque mode on.